Hello again from Japan! Today we are taking a day trip to the town of Kawagoe. Let's get going! So the reason we have decided to take a day trip here in Kawagoe is because Kawagoe is actually a really popular tourist spot for local tourists, but not super popular for foreign tourists. Also, Kawagoe is known as Ko Edo, which translates to Little Edo because it's supposed to be like a smaller version of Edo, which was the original name for Tokyo way back during the Edo period. So That's we're really cool. We're really excited to see uh, everything this town has to offer. And our first stop is going to be to check out one of the most famous shrines here. We've got about a 15 minute walk to get there. We have just made it to our first stop of the day, which is the Kita Inn Temple. This temple actually dates back to like 830. So it's a very old temple, although most of it was actually destroyed in the 1600s and then rebuilt. And this temple is really important because it played a major role during the Edo period, apparently. Mm. So we're excited to check this place out. It looks really beautiful. So to enter the Kita Inn temple, it does cost 400 yen but I would definitely say it's worth it. Yeah, it's totally worth it. There was so much to see. Mm -hmm. If you are a history buff and you like to see like artifacts and antiques and stuff mm -hmm. like that, there's tons of it inside. Mm -hmm. And you have to come see it in person because unfortunately you can't actually film while you're inside mm -hmm. of most of the rooms of the temple. Um, I captured a little bit of the outside, but yeah, the inside you got to just come and see for yourself. Definitely worth it, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a couple other things to see here too on the temple grounds, so we're going to go and explore a little bit more. Oh, there's a lot of statues. So we know from the name, there's 500 statues in total here. So one thing that's really interesting is that these statues were actually made during the time when Japan was closed off to the rest of the world. And so the artists felt like they had a little bit more freedom with what they could do. And they actually gave every single statue a different, unique expression. So it's really cool to see because you got some smiling ones, you got some passive ones, some angry ones. And yeah, it's just, it's really amazing to see. And there's 500 of them to look at. We are all done with our first temple and now we are heading to our next destination. So although this is a much smaller temple, what makes it really interesting is the story behind it. Mm. So there was a farmer who lost his eyesight in both of his eyes and he tried to kill himself on several occasions but failed. And so he took that as a sign from the gods that he should become a priest. So he became a priest and would pray and fast at this temple every single day and then he slowly regained his eyesight. Oh. So kind of an interesting story. Now we are all done with our temples. It was a nice way to start the day. And now we're heading to the main town area. Probably gonna grab some food soon. We're getting hungry. Yes. As we were walking into the main town area, we stumbled across another temple. And this one's really interesting because the lanterns you'll see this little bird this three-legged crow and it's supposed to be like the god of guidance that will guide you throughout life pretty interesting so one thing that you can do here is you can go pray to the sink and depending on where you touch the body of the sink you pray for different things like the head is for like being smarter at school if you touch the body is for health and stuff like that. Very cool. We 
We have made it to the main street here in Kawagoe and it honestly feels like we've gone back in time if it wasn't for the cars. If there's no cars here, it'd feel a bit more authentic. But even with the cars, it honestly feels like we're back in the Edo period with all of these old buildings and it's just, it's so beautiful, it's so cool. We found a place to eat. We're really excited, it looks really good and it's very busy in here. Yeah, I'm very excited. They're known for their dangles. So mm -hmm. my set comes with a bit uh, one dangle. I'm very excited. That meal was super satisfying. Be able to sit inside mm -hmm. and eat some hot noodles. Mm -hmm. Although I had cold noodles, so that yeah. probably wasn't the smartest idea, but honestly, those matcha noodles were probably like the most interesting noodles I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed them. And now we're gonna just continue to explore and just be on fire by all of the beautiful architecture. Like right now, I'm staring at this amazing building and it's just so beautiful. We've made it to one of the most famous spots here in Kawagoe, which is the bell tower. It's a wooden bell tower that is like super old and looks amazing. Very well maintained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So cool. And now it's time for a snack. Even though we just ate. So we got our little snack. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it was steaming hot and right now I'm still very cold. So I would like something hot, but it's like a little bun and I think it has like red bean inside. Mmm, it's sweet potato, it's sweet potato and red bean. Oh, sure. So you can see at the bottom there's a sweet potato and at the top it's kind of hard to see but there's some red bean in there. I'll take another bite to make it easier to see. There you go. Mmm. Yeah, it sounds like exactly what I like. So as we were walking, we came across another really nice looking building and it turns out it's just a Starbucks, but it's like one of the nicest Starbucks I've ever seen. It reminds me of the Starbucks that we saw in Gyeongju in Korea. It's, yeah, it's just really cool to see a Starbucks in like an old building. Time to get some coffee. We have made it to our next stop, which is the Kawagoe Hikawa Shrine. I think that's how you say it. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of things that make this shrine really special, and one of them is that it has the largest wooden torii gate in all of Japan. It is indeed very big. It's super huge, really cool. We're excited to check out this shrine. Look at how tiny Sandy is compared to this thing. It goes on and on and on. Woo! We have just made it to Kashiya Yokocho, also known as Candy Alley. Ooh. And there's lots of little shops here, like traditional uh, Japanese candy stores and snack stores. So we're excited to uh, take a look at some of them and maybe eat some candy. Yeah, I'm excited for the candies. We got some candies. We got a honey, honey candy. Mm -hmm. We got a plum candy. Plum candy. And here we got a very colorful bag of honey. This is like, just looks like sugar basically. I 
I got a giant rice cracker. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. It's like almost the size of my body. You wanna eat that? It's so big. I can hit you with it. I think so it is 85 centimeters long. Mm. The thing that's scary is it weighs like nothing because it's a rice cracker so it's very light. Also, I don't know how we're going to transport this because this is too big to fit in my bag. It's literally twice as big as my bag. <laughs> You're so just going to hold it. I think I'm just going to have to hold this the whole day now. People just stare at you on the train. <laughs> no. don't, don't play with it. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely like one of the prettiest towns here in Japan and especially because it's close by to Tokyo. You can find towns like this in Okayama but that's pretty far to go and obviously Kyoto has a lot of old buildings but if you're in Tokyo this is a must-do day trip and it's so cheap to get here. From Ikebukuro I think it's like 400 yen. So we're here now at our final stop which is Koedo Kurari which is like a old complex that was like a brewery originally and now it's been split up into like a restaurant, a souvenir shop, cafe and I believe this building that we're about to walk into is like the alcohol, the sake shop. We're excited to check it out! Okay, so now we are in the sake building of this place and they have sake vending machines which is really cool. So you got your 500 yen coins. We're gonna put it in here. That'll give us three medals. And then we use these little metal coins for the sake vending machine. So let's try some sake. Okay, so we got our first sake. Also, I still have my race cracker just hanging off the back of me. And Sandy got number 18, I got number 16. What does that mean? Who knows? It's a mystery. Hey, so, hey, So in addition to the cool sake vending machines, they obviously sell the sake here. So you can basically, the point of the sake vending machines is to try every single sake that they sell. Um, and then in addition to selling sake, they also sell like fermented foods, like pickled foods. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's like a very interesting place. If you want to buy souvenirs, mm -hmm. I think this is a good area to be in. Mm -hmm. We had an amazing day at Kawagoe. Yeah, it was so much fun uh, just looking at all of the old buildings and the temples were amazing mm -hmm. and ending the day at this uh, Koedo Kurari, name's right here behind us. Yeah. And this place was a great way to end the day because mm -hmm. it's it's a really cool place to see all of the souvenirs from Kawagoe and obviously all of the uh, sake, sake tasting. tasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was really fun. If you enjoy our video, please leave a comment below and mm -hmm. like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys in the next one and make sure you come to Kawagoe because mm -hmm. it's a really cool place. Bye! Uh...